welcome to Harpening. This week I'll be teaching you a tune. In last week's video we did the chords of this tune. It's called South Wind. This week I'll be teaching you the bare bones of the tune and next week we'll talk about how to make it a bit more interesting with some ornamentation. And then in the last week of July we have an extra video this month. So I'll give you some options on what to do with the left hand on how to make your own arrangements. Just because I could change things up a bit, I thought I would teach you this tune using my Weissgerber harp. It's a Weissgerber Seraphine, and this one is made out of cherry wood. I'm very happy with it. I use it at least once a week, maybe more often sometimes. Um, it's great if you want to get close to people, and it sounds wonderful. It can be very soft, but it can also play quite loudly. So if you're looking for a 26 strings harp, I would definitely recommend this one. Once you've been playing folk music for a while, you'll notice that there are some similarities within the tunes. Many tunes will have a sort of setup that is used to make the melody. This setup consists of using a sentence and then maybe repeating the sentence or doing the same thing with a different ending or even playing a beginning part, then doing something different and then coming back to the beginning. When you want to start learning music by ear, it is very good to start recognizing these patterns so that you can easily memorize a tune. In classical music particularly, it's very easy to use themes for music and indicate them with a letter. So there is the A theme, then a little later there comes a B theme, and then later on the A theme gets repeated again. This system can also be used in folk music and learning how to recognize the parts of a tune. The tune Southwind that I'm teaching you today has two parts. The first part, the A part, consists of two sentences, which you could maybe indicate as A1 and A2. Then the B part has a different beginning, but after that new beginning you get the A1 part, the new B part beginning cuts played again, and then you get the A2 part as an ending. I'll show you what it means by playing the tune. If you want to learn a tune by ear, it's very important that you listen to the tune a few times before you start learning it. I'll give you the bare bones of this tune. So if you go on the internet, you can find many different versions of this. I'll give you the bare bones and I'll give you some options next week for how to vary them and how to get creative uh, playing them. The whole tune it's played in G. Remember the key we did it last week? The key of G has an F sharp. So on my harp I have the A, the B and the E up to have it in the key of C. And then I add the F sharp to have it in the key of G. I'll play you the A part of the tune first. Let's look at the A part together. I will play it for you and tell you what it's made up of. It starts with four fingers, C, B, A, G. And the first time after that it goes up and ends on A. The second part of the A part starts with the same beginning, so those four fingers again. But now you go down to E and you 
and on the tonic tone, which is the G. So I'll play it again and you can listen again. So C, B, A, G in the beginning. Then an ending. Same beginning, down, and ending on G. That's the A part. Let's do it together. The first four notes are C, B, A, G. It starts on an upbeat. So we have one, two, three, one, two, C, B, That's your beginning. Play along with me. One, two, three, one, two. C, B, A, G. One more time and then we'll start using it in the tune. One, two, three, one, two. Well done. We'll start using it in the tune. As I said, this little bit gets repeated within the A sentence, within the A part of the tune. I'll tell you when it comes along and you just play along those notes. I'll play the ending, the first and the second ending, so that you can just concentrate on those four notes. Start by putting them down. One, two, three, one, two. Listen. Now put your fingers ready, here it comes, and, and then we get a different ending. Well done, again. Listen, and comes again. the same thing again you just play those four notes and I will make sure that I play the endings if you need go back to where I just what we just did and listen to it a few times while playing along those four notes what I'll do now is I'll do the same thing you'll be playing those four notes I'll be playing the endings but I won't indicate when those four notes are coming so you'll have to add them in when you hear them one Two, three, one, two. Was that? Did it go well? If you're having trouble then just repeat that little bit and try to add those notes in when you can. I'll continue to the first ending of the A part. The first ending goes like this. B, C, D. So you get B, C, D and then you go down to the A. So the ending is B, C, D, A, A, A. Maybe you noticed I'm changing my fingers here. Just not to use the same finger on the same string. If you're having trouble then doing that, then don't worry, just use the same finger. It is however nice to do it in order to just give your fingers some rest and to give yourself some time in order to change the note. It sounds nicer when you do this. The same finger sounds different than when you do changing your finger. So let's do this ending together and then we'll do the first bit with the ending. The ending just starts on the first beat. So one, two, three, B, 
C, D, A, A, B, and again, two, three. Once more, two, three. Last time, two, three. Let's start from the beginning on those four fingers, C, B, A, G, and then continue to that ending. I'll show you how it goes first. This is how it's going to sound. Now join in if you want. One, two, three, one. Two. Let's do that again. One, two, three, one, two. We'll do the first thing that we did just now, which is I will play the first sentence, the whole of it, and you will play along the parts that you know, which means that you'll actually, right after playing this A, 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 you'll have to do the four fingers again. One, two, three, one, two. Second ending. Well done. I'll teach you the second ending now so that you can also play that. If you're having a bit of trouble still following, just go back, rewind the video and play along whatever you can. The second ending is on the E with your second finger. There's two ways of doing it. this. You can either play this E on its own. So you do E and then put down three fingers, D, E, G. But nicer is if you can actually put those two fingers down, play the E and then put the E and the G down before you play the D. So again, E, Put it back with the G, the thumb, and then play. If this is difficult, then just play the E on its own, and then put down three fingers. After this bit, the G gets repeated twice. So. also starts on the first beat of the bar. So I'll count you off and we'll play this part three times after one another together. Just repeat this a little bit. One, two, three. For good measure, we'll now do the change from going down those four notes to E, D, E, G. So it'll sound like this. C, B, A, G, E, D, E, G. Last time. 
Play along if you want to, just the second ending of the first part. One, two, three, one, two. Down to E. I'll give you a second to remember what the first ending was. Do you still remember? The first ending goes up to B, C, D and ends on A. We're gonna play this together. I will play the whole A part and you will play whatever you can. Now, don't panic if you can't play along straight away. Just play the parts that you know. If you notice that you get lost somewhere, then listen to what I'm doing and try to come back in. Instead of stopping the whole thing, try to keep the melody going in your head, or in this case, because I'm playing it, and follow along wherever you can so that you get the melody into your ears. Once it's in your ears, it'll be easier to come out of your fingers as well. Just because we're practicing, I'll play the A part three times so that you can play along and practice how it goes. The first time I'll indicate which ending. After that, you'll have to listen to what's coming. One, two, three, one, and. First ending. ending and the beginning one more time Now before I start teaching you the B part, I would like you to play along with the parts that you already know. I'll play the B part for you first so that you can listen and see what, where the parts that you know go. Then I'll do a play along version. The B part goes like this. Now it's the a part with the first ending. The new part again from B. And the second ending with the A part. So you'll actually notice that the first sentence and the second sentence of the A part gets played fully. The only thing is there's a different beginning to it. I'll play the beginning and you play along the A parts that you know. So put your fingers ready for the A part. It starts C, B, A, G. I'll let you know when it gets played. One, two, three, one, two. Here it comes, up for the first ending, now listen to the B part, the 
here comes the A part again. Yeah. Second ending. That's the whole B part. And you'll notice that you actually know already half of that B part. The actual B part that is new is also something that gets repeated. So that makes it easier for you still. There's only one little bit still to learn. That little bit goes like this. It starts on a high D and your thumb goes to the high G. So it's D, G, and the G gets repeated. And then you go down, F, E, D, D, D. There's a few ways to do this with your fingers. I'll usually start like this with the second finger in the thumb. So D, G. And then you can either use a different finger to play that G again. The second finger again. And then put your thumb on G and put four fingers down. So you get G, F, E, G. The other thing you could do is start with second finger and thumb and just use your second or your third and your second finger to play the G and then put your thumb on the F F E D so that is up to you how you want to do it we're going to try this again or I'll play it one more time now if you're having trouble with the fingering you can practice this first on your own but maybe on the video now, you can already play along with this D, G, 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 and you'll just leave out whatever comes next. So the B part, it starts on the upbeat again, and we'll repeat it three times just to learn it. One, two, three, one, two, D, G. Are you ready to put the B part and the A part together? Like I said, play along whatever you can. So if you're having trouble putting the B part together with the A1 or the A2 part, then just focus on one of those. So maybe focus on the B part first, or let me play the B part and you just focus on playing the A1 or the A2 part. One, two, Three, one, two, A one, B part again. Let's do the whole thing again. D, G. A1. B part. A2. I'm going to play the whole tune. I'll put in some bass so that you know what it could sound like and you can play along whichever part you know how to play. 
Don't get frustrated, just repeat it as much as you need it and focus on listening to where the part that you know goes so that you can always play along that safely. You can then add more to it once you know how to play along your little part that you do know. One, two, three, one, two. said next week I'll be teaching you some variations or how to make your own variations on this tune and then in the extra video that we have this month of July I'll teach you how to do some bass patterns and maybe make some variations in the bass. I'll see you next week! <laughs>